So we're here at uh, Bristol Veg Fest, and I'm here with the incredible Kate Strong, and so we're just talking a little bit about uh, positivity. And I was just curious how you found in your own life, kind of um, having discussions with others, how uh, positivity has played a role. Uh, it's, um, we, yeah, as we were saying earlier, words create our world. So I found that the more pos- when I focus on what I want rather than what I don't want, uh-huh. well, I'll get either which way. But yeah, by using positive words, I'm actually creating bridges to be able to connect with people, mm-hmm. to get into their world to actually make a positive difference and, and be curious in their life but also to keep my neurons firing and keep me you know learning more as well so by me having a fixed mindset that my way is the highway uh, then it, it just closes down friendships it closes down being able to change the world as well so positivity exactly. is the foundation to everything I do in my language so I'm here with the incredible Doug Ma and you've been a uh, vegan for how many years now 22 this uh, July so 20 20- 22, yeah. 22 years, that's incredible, and an activist for it seems like most of them? Oh, it, it's difficult because um, I thought I was an activist, then discovered what other people were doing and felt like I was doing nothing. So, you know, you sort of go through different stages where I was involved in sabbing and liberation, that kind of stuff, and then I got into politics, so I spent a long time just doing that traditional, more accepted version of activism. So mm-hmm. Uh, and then after a bit of a hiatus where all I did was just eat vegan and live as vegan as I could, you know, the um, uh, discovery of uh, social media and stuff like that just and vegan festivals uh, just made me realize how many different activities are going on and how easy it is to get involved with them. They're all different and uh, all equal, you know what I mean? I, I'm quite, quite a fan of the soft activism, things like the inflatables outreach that Uh I see quite a few people doing there because it engages children and families and it's not it's not um, graphic in your face stuff that we all seen I mean it it, it helped cement my veganism years and years ago watching lots of graphic reception videos and stuff like that but I wouldn't share them anymore because you know I'm kind of preaching to the converted that most people I'm friends with on social media are vegan anyway and if they're not then I don't think it is uh, um, convincing them by showing them graphic images. I, I find it's much easier to get into a conversation through some of these soft forms of activism. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a place for all that graphic stuff and the uh, people who are responsible for it need to see it. I admire people for each different type of activism they participate in. I see the AV stuff, I see the save movement and I see, you know, these, th- these people need to take care of their own um, well-being as well because it can be incredibly draining emotionally and mentally just witnessing some of the stuff they they uh, witness I know because I worked in that industry for a while so it's 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 hard on people so they need to they need to come to more outreach events just for a group hug, hug kind of thing you know yeah. so people can share uh, it's, it's a bit like a psychologist or a counsellor would say oh, unloading your luggage you know because we build it up and build it up so if we don't unload it now and again it's, it's going to damage us so I, I like to see more people involved in vegan outreach because mm-hmm. when they are, that gives them an opportunity to share and it, it helps deal with the uh, horrendous things that they're seeing and witnessing. Do you find that um, veganism as a subject comes up much in your day-to-day life? It does, yeah. Um, you know, obviously every meal time, I've been traveling for a week with my four generations of my family and every day, you know, my 90-year-old grandma was like, why aren't you eating meat? What are you? And um, it's, it's, it's a topic that that can be quite emotive and it could be mm-hmm. seen as quite um, judging as well you know when I, when I share what happens to those animals well the simple thing is something died to be put on your plate it, it can be seen as very judgmental mm-hmm. and it's important to keep it positive keep it simple w- without simplifying what we're standing for as well trauma is very real in the vegan community mm-hmm. and uh, do you have any tricks I guess you would recommend for kind of managing the, um, the exposure that trauma? I, um, I, 
unfollow posts that are graphic. Uh-huh. So oh. even though I used to post them myself, I unfollow posts like that. I don't find them helpful. I mm-hmm. find them quite upsetting. So and and also um, talking to other uh, vegans and people who've been through traumatic experience. Um, so there are groups on Facebook that can help with that, and uh, there are some very good groups I'm, I'm, I'm a member of. I tend to not get too involved, but occasionally if someone asks something that I feel I can help with, I'll dive in with a little bit of uh, feedback. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I need some as well, you know. And have you seen any um, progress, in, like with family members or um, people close to you in your life? Melanie Joy talks about the stages and not necessarily being vegan, but being a vegan ally, for instance. Do you think those in your life kind of understand kind of why you're vegan? Um, I think they do, yes. Yep. Um, I've been very... Uh, no no one else in my world is even vegetarian. But my step, my sister-in-law, sorry, she she's a, a makeup artist, and she started to now look for products that are not tested on animals. Uh-huh. And so other people, you know, my, my partner regularly eats my food, and it's surprisingly tasty. Yeah. So his mindset <laughs> is shifting that all we eat is bland, boring food and lentils. And even my parents, I remember one year, they asked me if we could have a vegan Christmas. Christmas. So I cooked a meal <laughs> and my father had this beautiful um, sort of mushroom wellington that he could carve into and serve with all our beautiful fruit and vegetables. And they, yeah. they didn't miss it. So, you know, fruit and veg and whole foods is becoming a much bigger part in all our foods together. And they, they know that they can eat meat in front of me and they're not going to receive a huge negative lecture. Mm-hmm. But they're also curiously engaged and keep adding more flavors, textures and colors and different food sources as well so I'm, I'm really excited to see them eating healthier and just being more interested in what they're eating too. Um, do you have any recommendations for people who are looking to get more involved? Go to outreach events uh-huh. try a different range you'll find your fit so whichever one you enjoy you'll meet uh-huh. some wonderful people you might meet some not so wonderful people but it's easy you just yeah. don't continue to associate with those people uh-huh. because people are people it doesn't matter we'd like to think we're all wonderful because we're vegan but we're not we have a bad day and some, sometimes people can be unpleasant mm-hmm. and so find your group find what it is that you want to do if you enjoy doing say if you enjoy doing anonymous for the voice of the first things experience if you enjoy doing inflatable outreach or doing tasters I find they're amazing you see these activists going out setting up a stall and giving away vegan samples amazing yeah. because people are seeing the alternatives instead of people saying yeah but we've got milk or yeah but we've got bacon People are showing them what we've got, and it's come on since 22 years ago. It's come on a lot. So, if, people, if, if for example, you showed me a, a vegan burger 20 years ago, it would have been green, flaky, and and looked not very palatable. Now you can show a range of them, and people are. It, it doesn't matter if you're a burger person or not. You can show a range. It's whatever you can use to get people engaged. And when you get your first person comes to you and says, "Do you know what?" and you see the penny drop and and you know that they're they're going to go vegan and they they're going on a journey and you can be part of that journey and they you know they take your details and and you can help them through that journey. There's no better feeling than that. No yeah. So would you say that's the biggest uh, benefit you get from getting active and kind of getting out there, that helping someone to kind of embrace veganism? Absolutely. It's great for me as yeah. well as them. It's great for them that they've turned me, but it's great for me. It makes me feel good. So it's not... It's, it's strange because we like to think it's altruistic to do these good things and like encourage things for uh, to promote animal uh, well-being and stop people harming them. And it's also good for the environment, good for our health, good for like um, good for animals, you know, mm-hmm. good good for the people themselves. But is it really altruistic when it makes me feel so good? <laughs> so, it's a deep, I think it's, I think it's philosophical mutual, yeah. question. So, I think as long as it's ticking both boxes, you're yeah, probably it, you're you probably know, sweet. Right, yeah. so I've, I've probably got six or seven at the minute people who I'm helping transition um, through doing diet plans and things for them, and they are now close friends. Uh-huh. And, you know, they, they were just regular meat eaters before, uh, just like we all were, uh, almost all of us anyway, at some point. So that really, really makes me happy when I see see the progress they're making. Uh-huh. So that, for me, is, is, is it. It's, yes, it's great to be able to show them how they're helping animals, but when you see the change in them and you know they're going to go out and they're going to convert people to uh, a healthier, more 
or ethical choice. Nothing basic. Have they been to like a, a festival? Like uh, I think uh, Veg Fest is a brilliant place where people have like a good vegan taste experience. My partner, yes. So I live. Uh -huh. I live with a, a very big omnivore. Uh -huh. uh, so he's a Turkish uh, guy who didn't even know what vegan meant when we first met. Oh wow! Um, so he's been a few times, and he he really adores the food. But for him, it's the simple simplicity. So he loves the simple way of just going to the shops and buying what's available. And so I see it as a personal challenge to step up, help yeah. those businesses to get mainstream. So his simple choices are right there in front of him. So and, and is that like from a package perspective, simple or just quick? A quick availability. Make sure that all the major supermarket chains are, have have more products. You, know, you yeah. can have 20 different types of cheeses, but I just see one choice. I want 20 different options of non-dairy and non-animal products available as well. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. I think a lot of it um, is just knowing the options that were out there. I mean, before I went vegan, I didn't know. And all of a sudden, it's you know, you can open up a can of beans, put some sweet corn in. It's actually a pretty nice meal. Yeah. And, you know, takes, you know, less than two minutes to make or whatever. And so how can people uh, look you up and kind of learn about all the amazing work you're doing? Well, people can add me on Facebook if they want. Um, it's Doug Moore. Uh, it's Moore, M-A-W. Uh -huh. Or, you know, just uh, come and see me. I talk at a lot of festivals, um, giving my perspective because I'm, because I'm from an animal agriculture background, some people find it interesting to know what made me tick, what goes on in the mind of someone who works in a slaughterhouse, is a butcher, is a farmer. I've done all of those things. So before 22 years of being a vegan, I did that. So I've got a, I've got a very personal journey that I share. If people want to hear about that journey, just get in touch. You know, they can email me Doug Moore at yahoo.com or ymail.com. Go find me at any of the um, festivals that I'm speaking at. I think the next one I'm at speaking at probably the Great Yorkshire Vegan Festival in Leeds. And I understand you just launched a YouTube channel. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? I have. So it's, it's backing on to, um, I'm now a business coach. So I've been um, creating businesses myself for over 10 years and now is the time to actually empower others. As I said, I want to see more and more businesses mainstream and we've got to do it together. We've got to start collaborating more and more and sharing our knowledge, sharing our connections and really, really, you know, blow the veganism out of the, out of the minimalism of the one percenters into mainstream. So my YouTube channel is all about that. It's all about positivity, profit with purpose, and creating that change we want to see in the world. Um, would you, is there anything you'd recommend to people who are just starting to um, get out there and talk about veganism? What would you tell people um, uh, that, I guess, your perspective kind of help, to help people connect people with what's actually going on behind closed doors? Yeah, well, um, it, it's tough. Uh, my, I guess my... Um, best advice would be learn learn everything you need to know so if you if you know a subject you're more convincing so if you yeah. you do your research learn about everything but in terms of talking to people who who work in that industry they're the same as me are you yeah it's a myth that these people are all psychopaths they do it for a wide range of reasons I didn't go into that industry because I thought it'd be fun to slaughter animals I did it because uh, 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 I was culturally conditioned to think it was an acceptable job and one that fit in with my boxing and my uh, rugby and the other uh, sort of machismo sports I was pursuing at the time. So understand that people have different perspectives and it's very rare you'll come across a psychopath but yeah. you might but you can just as easily find one in the vegan community so you know don't judge people. That's a great Every, point. Everyone treat them as though you, you know they're exactly the same because we were all there at one point and uh, it's unfair, as I say, to judge them just because they're doing something that uh, puts food on the plates of those who choose to eat animals. So, oh, thank you so much, Kate. And I'll enjoy the festival and cheers for the time. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you so much for all the work you do for the animals. Nice. Vegan hug. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go enjoy Bristol Veg Fest.